Welcome to Free! I'm Geraldine and today I'm going to share with you my experience with the TOEFL and IELTS exams. This section is about TOEFL and IELTS experience, so I thought that I should give you my experience. Well, it all began in the year 2013, 2013, when I was writing my thesis. I wasn't working at the time. I didn't want to teach English anymore because I wanted to dedicate to my career and I didn't want to work in my career because I wanted to finish writing my thesis first. So I started doing that. While I was doing that, I got a call from a friend asking me to help her with TOEFL. And well, I had heard what TOEFL was and kind of knew, but I didn't feel ready as to help someone preparing for it. So I told her so, but she insisted and she said, come on, I know you can help me. I'm taking a course already so I can give you the material, whatever. So basically we started learning about the exam together. Of course, I had to Google the exam and it was like pretty overwhelming. So there's lots of information on the exam from all the TOEFL series. Uh, well, the TOEFL IBT, the one she needed for a master's degree. So what she needed was a pretty high score and we started uh, studying. We started studying and learning, well, learned a lot about it. I had taught English, but you know, like normal English at an institute, basic intermediate advanced, mm -hmm. but this TOEFL thing was different. When I learned about the exam, I really liked it. I liked very much the format. I liked that. I felt very comfortable with it, with the language they spoke, with the topics they covered, because it's a lot of science and biology, and, and that was like things that I was familiar with, but not my student. And unfortunately, she was not going to study English full-time or prepare for the exam full-time. So at that point, it wasn't clear for me how much time you needed to get a desired score, or um, better yet, uh, what level you needed to get a particular score. I wasn't so clear on that. After a few months, maybe a year, I started getting other students also uh, aiming for, for the same score and for the same exam. And well, I started to realize there that what students want is someone to help them to get to know the exam and how to pass the exam. But the thing is that what they really need is to focus on their English and more specifically in their academic English. Because many times these are students who already can communicate in English, but they don't know exactly the difference between English, normal, <laughs> normal English, colloquial English, communicative English, and academic English. So I felt I could help them with that then. So, so far I was just uh, into TOEFL, but it turned out that my first student decided that she didn't want to take the TOEFL anymore. She was going to move to IELTS. I disagree with that choice because if it took a long time to learn how to, uh, to, to get to know an exam, it was going to take time to get to know a different exam. So what she didn't have was time, so I didn't think that it was a good uh, idea. But well, she did, <laughs> she, he sh but she switched to the exam, so I switched with her. <laughs> we started uh, getting to know the other exam, the IELTS, and of course it was a totally different exam. You had to learn how to deal with that, but again, um, the main point was not the exam, the main point was the English level. Eventually, I took the IELTS exam myself and it was a great educational experience. It was, it helped me a lot to understand uh, how student feels. Well, not exactly because I didn't have all the pressure that the students have, but to, to see by myself what it was like to be there. So something that happens to many of you happened to me too. I didn't get the score that I thought I deserved. I was aiming for a nine, you know, the highest score. And I got an eight. And I got an eight. 
and I still haven't fully recovered from that. But it did help me. It helped me read and analyze better what they expect from us as test takers. That was almost three years ago, and I've continued helping students with those exams and any other exams that really uh, you need to certify your level of English. So I've drawn some conclusions out of it. First of all, you need to learn English well, not necessarily at the advanced level, but depending on the level you aim to certify. For example, if you need to certify basic, well, you need to learn basic correctly. If you need to certify intermediate, you need the whole intermediate learned properly. If you want to certify advanced, you need to learn all the advanced level properly. If you want to certify business English, then you need a grasp on business English. If you want to certify academic English, well, you need to study some academic English. That was the first thing. The second conclusion is that any exam is unique. So what you really need to do before taking the exam is to analyze the exam and to see the format of the exam and what they ask from you, what they want from you. And that will make you get a higher score uh, or the score that really reflects your level in that exam because you are going to be familiar with the exam and familiar with what they are asking you to deliver. When regarding these academic exams, the third conclusion is that what you need a lot the most after you have the level you need is the vocabulary. When I started uh, taking these exams, preparing for these exams and helping for these exams, the thing that I haven't stopped learning is vocabulary because that is the only thing you never end learning. I keep saying this. So vocabulary is very, very important, especially academic vocabulary if you're aiming for an academic degree. And finally, uh, what you have also a little bit different with these academic exams is the speaking and the writing because they expect you to speak and write in an academic way. So you need to focus on what it takes to be organized and to deliver clearly things in an academic uh, setting. Those are the conclusions after my experience. And I'm sure that I'll get a lot more experience too in the future. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe, share, and see you soon.